Hello and welcome to yet another episode in the series. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded here, but hey, I'm back. And in today's episode, we're going to build a command line application in Rust. So the app will be simple. It's going to be a news reader app from the command line. And I have the finished project on to the right. So for a quick demo, let me go ahead and run the project. And as you can see, you have a bunch of news articles printed on the console and I can open up one of the links and that opens in the browser. So it's a pretty simple app, but should be informative enough for you to get the hang of developing in Rust and exploring the library ecosystem. Now, in order to fetch the news articles, we're going to use the API endpoint from the newsapi.org website. And from the documentations page, we'll use the top headlines endpoint. And to make the API request, We'll be using the urec crate it's a very simple crate that does not use async but instead uses the blocking io request model and that's perfectly fine for our use case here since we're just going to make a single api request now the response that we receive from the api request is going to come in the json format so in order to parse this into a rust data structure we're going to use the serdy json crate and certijson is the de facto library for anything involving serialization and deserialization of JSON format in Rust. So once we have the parsed data structure from JSON, we're going to use the color crate that has a bunch of APIs in the form of macros that will let us print colored text in the terminal. So with the dependencies covered, I'm going to start with a brand new project here. So let's do cargo new CLI news for lack of a better name and we'll open this up in my code editor now before we type any code i'm gonna go ahead and run a handy little tool called bacon and what this will do is run cargo check in the background for us so any change that we make to the code will get an error message right away without us having to manually run cargo check from the command line so that's that now the way this is going to work is I'm going to speed things up while I think and code and from time to time I'm going to cue you in to explain stuff in between. So let's start writing some code. Now let's take a look at the code so far. First, we define the variable URL using the let keyword, which contains the top headlines endpoint as a string. Then we pass in the URL to the get articles function and functions in Rust are defined using the fn keyword, followed by the name of the function, followed by parentheses. And within the parentheses, you can have parameters whose types go on the right hand side. And the return type to the function is followed by the right arrow. In this case, the return type is a result. Now, result type in Rust is a bit complex to grasp in the first go. So here is the documentation for the result type. If you take a look at the definition, it's an enum that represents two values. First one is OK, which represents a successful operation. And second is an error value, which represents a failure. At the same time, the result is also a generic type, which means you can pass in any type T as a success value or any type E as an error value. 
So we'll get to cover result and generic types in more detail in future videos, but I hope this makes sense. So going by the definition of result, in the success case, we are returning something called articles that we have defined here. And in the error case, we are returning something called a box of Dyn error. Now, this is again a bit complex to cover for this video. But if I have to give you a brief idea on this type is that box Dyn error simply represents a pointer to an object that implements the error trait. Now, traits in Rust are similar to Java interfaces and Haskell type classes. Well, definitely a topic for another video, but you get the idea. So within the get articles method, we call the get function from the urec crate passing in the url and then we invoke the call method which returns a result type and in order to extract a success value from the result type we can use the question mark operator now in the case the call invocation fails the question mark operator simply bails early from the function which is get articles in this case now given that the call invocation succeeds we then chain this call with into string and that returns a result as well and followed by the question mark operator which extracts the success value out of result and finally we store the HTTP response in the variable response and then we print the response using the debug macro which is a handy way to do print line debugging and then we have this to do macro which is a way to let the compiler know that uh, you have an unfinished code but you still want to compile the code and let it run through now what happens in this case is that when the program reaches line 17 it's, it will simply panic and crash with a message not yet implemented so that's that and talking about the article struct definition so to define structures in rust you use the struct keyword followed by the name of the structure with a capital letter and then you put a bunch of fields within braces so in this case we have the articles field that is simply a vector of article and article again is a structure defined with two fields title and url both of which are strings and this is a heap allocated string here so if you take a look at the top headlines endpoint response, you can see that articles is an array and each entry within the array is an object that also contains the title and URL. So we're going to be using just these two fields for this video. All right. So let me go ahead and run this project and try to see the output. And you can see a lot of gibberish being printed. But if you take a closer look, you can see that we have the response variable as a JSON format as a string. So now that we have the response as a JSON string, it's time we convert this to an instance of articles. And to do that, we're going to use the Surdy JSON crate. So I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to type cargo add Surdy JSON. And we'll also need an additional crate called survey that will help us annotate the article struct with a macro to generate serialization and deserialization methods at compile time. So that would be handy. And we'll need to make an additional change to how survey is specified in our dependencies as the derived macro is not included by default. So I'm going to expand it to the object notation here. And under the features field, I'm going to add in derive. So with that change, we should be able to use the derive macro and can derive the deserialized crate. Now deserialized crate is not exposed by default. So I'm going to import this from the survey crate. Since articles implements deserialized, so it requires that its field also implements deserialized. Now WEC already implements deserialize, but the contents of the WEC, which is article in this case, does not. So I'm going to add in deserialize here as well. And with that, our code compiles. The next step is to parse this from the JSON string into articles using the survey JSONs from STIR API. And I'm going to pass in a reference to our response. And since from STIR returns a result type, I'm going to put in the question mark operator so that we can extract the articles out of it or bail out early if there is any error. So with JSON parsing implemented, let's try to do some print line debugging and make sure that we're able to see articles on the console. So I'm going to do cargo run here and looks like we have an error here. Otherwise, we should have got an output from line 21. And it appears that either line 19 or 17 has the error because get articles returns early in this case and in order to check for that i'm going to go to main and try to print articles here 
and looks like we have another error and this error has to do something with the compiler not being able to print the article instance and it needs something called the debug trait so the fix is simple we'll just go to the derive annotation here and i'm going to add the debug trait and same with article as well and that should fix the error so let's do cargo run once again and if you take a look at the output we indeed have an error here and the error is a bit misleading here because Serdy JSON is trying to parse it into a data structure that it cannot parse into so we can help Serdy by explicitly typing out the the data type that we want the JSON to be parsed into so I'm going to type in articles here and hopefully this should fix the problem so let's do cargo run again sweet so if you take a look at the output we are finally able to get the articles printed on the terminal but it doesn't look as good as the output from the finished project that we saw earlier and that can be fixed by using the color crate so next we're going to use the color crate and try to add some formatting and styling to our news article but before i do that i'm going to make one small change to the get articles function which is to remove the to do macro and replace the debug with the ok variant because the return type of get articles has to be a result type and we have done exactly that so with that change we can now move ahead and start integrating the color crate so i'll see you on the other side Okay, let's take a look at the changes made so far. So first, we added the color crate to our cargo.toml. And then back in main, we changed the return type of main to return a result. Because we wanted to use the question mark operator to extract the articles instance from the get articles method. And then we pass the articles into the render articles method, which is defined here. And render articles takes the article by reference. And then we iterate over the articles field. And for each article, we print out the title in dark green and the URL in yellow. And these two macros come from the color crate here. And as you can see from the output, we are pretty close to the expected output. So I'm going to run this once again, just so we can see the final output of our news reader app so it looks like we're almost done here so there you go in less than 50 lines of code we were able to make http request parse the http response using a serialization library and did a bit of formatting to print the article to the console now this video has probably skipped a lot of details in terms of the language features and that was intentional because i didn't want to make the video too complex for starters and that means in upcoming videos I'm going to be going more into detail on some of the complex language features in Rust. So till then, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.